Anyone who's ever job hunted will have come across those two good to be true adverts on the internet offering employment, training and guaranteed placement. As Checkpoint producer Ndogozo Sindani now reports, they spring up just as fast as they close down. In October, we brought you the story of bogus recruitment agencies, which took money from desperate job seekers, but never delivered. Checkpoint went undercover and bust this man, then notified the Labor Department to arrive to quiz him about his methods. Okay. So the range is of 50 rand to start. Mm -hmm. Our training takes a duration of a week. Mm -hmm. And then after, it normally starts on Friday, starts Monday. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, they write an assessment test. Mm -hmm. If they pass the assessment test, the following week, that's when we take for job placement. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's when we charge them a placement fee. The Department of Labor informed core first recruiters they were operating illegally and gave them seven days to register and comply. When Checkpoint followed up, we found the officers locked. We weren't the only ones looking for them. These two women who did not want to be identified had also been duped. Then last week on Monday, I was in 700 Gabo, so we interviewed Gupi Erenbeck. Erenbeck, since the interview, I was in the phone, but she was also at the same day on Monday. They make a copy of my ID weight. Ne, or but it's in a class in basic plus minus twenty something. A class in basic level quail. Sign in a song case at the best. Nigga, my paper was at the attend the washes. We so good to see some pofu from Alberton. There's Bongani, there's Alisa. Tuesday, Naba Visa ATV checkpoint. Ne, so Tina said, that's a good issue. We won't get jobs anymore. Reason being, each checkpoint say expose us fees. While this illegal agency might have closed down or moved on, there are plenty more out there, like Tony, who in October pretended to represent major companies. Producer Ntogoza Sindani, who had paid Tony for job placement, went back to ask him if he was registered with the Department of Labor and why he was illegally charging for jobs. But you didn't pay for the job. the law allows you to charge? Absolutely, ma'am. That's what I'm saying. I don't deny. No, no. What I'm saying is I don't deny with the issue of the Department of Labor. That's what I say. That's what I'm referring to, Tony. Yes, ma'am. evading the subject. I am referring specifically to the issue of payment. All right. You charged me 650 rand. All right. Whether you call it a placement or a training fee, that's how much you charged. All right. Is that correct? Absolutely, it's correct. Yes, ma'am. Do you know what the law says about charging more than one rand? Absolutely, ma'am. What does I the law don't say know. About I don't know about the law. Tony is not the only one breaking the law and pleading ignorance. Leti Kaba tells us she was also made to pay by another agency. Leti paid a thousand rand for so-called training and placement. She took us to the building in downtown Johannesburg where she paid her money. There we found a man called Blessing, who claimed to be a recruitment agent. He said there were lots of expenses involved in getting people jobs. To put from here to MTN taxi rank, you take the quantum or whatever taxi, mm -hmm. uh, public taxi, it's 35 rand right. to Pretoria, mm -hmm. just for a negotiation with a boss. Even if you are it's taking them to London or to Cape Town, Mama, what the Mama, transport costs who's... are, you do not charge them. You I'm charge not, the company I'm not, that you are hiring for. I'm, there's no Even if you are independent, as business. a private employment time, agency, you can't tried, charge more than a rand. I once tried, Mama, understand what I say. I once tried to ask the support from the government. They told me the way how I have to go for trainings and such stuff. Then I so you decided I did to skip the training and start out charging this, a thousand rand. Listen, I did that. Yes. Then and found out, okay, now I'm not gonna manage to do this and this at the same time. By then I have to make sure that end of the day, end of the month here, I'm paying rent. 
So you decided to break the law because not, it was not, too hard for you to follow it. No, no not to, to break the law. Yes, but you are breaking the law what, right what, now. What I did, yes. what I did, Mama, mm -hmm. it's not what I did to the lady, she's the one. It's what you're doing to a lot of people. We asked the Labor Department why core first recruiters, whom we exposed, had been let off the hook. I believe there could have been an oversight. Uh, I checked with them um, and um, we have agreed that uh, in future incidences of this nature, where there's a blunt uh, a disregard of the law, those arrangements should be made and such uh, private employment agencies should be put behind bars. And giving first call recruiters seven days to comply was clearly an oversight. The issue of seven days does not apply to a agency that is not registered. It is an offense in terms of Section 30D of the Skills Development Act to operate a private employment agency without registration. Without proper enforcement, new legislation means nothing, says Casey Makubela of staffing agency Quest. So as it stands at the moment, there are a lot of regulations and laws that govern our industry, which are good enough to actually root out the scammers in our industry. But I think the problem that we have is that we don't have enough enforcers of those laws. It's up to job seekers to be vigilant. There are plenty of pointers, says Natalie Singer from regulatory body, APSA. As soon as anybody starts asking questions about payment, you should be um, suspicious. I would also be very concerned if there is no landline number, if they only want you to deal with them on a cell phone. And then, of course, if the agency is working off a Yahoo or a Gmail or one of these free email accounts, I would also be concerned. And I think the, the, the industry, through the likes of EPSO, um, the Department of Labor and police should work together. There should be some form of a dedicated unit. In the meantime, Letty and others like her feel they have nowhere to turn. And the sign on the door clearly states that unhappy job seekers will not be refunded. That's all from us this week. Please do give us your feedback. Our Twitter handle is at checkpoint underscore ENCA. Thanks for watching. I'm Nkepile Mabuseli.